Hello, welcome to the 11 tutorial in the GLUA Pro series where we're going to be taking a look at some recursion. Now, recursion is not that bad of a topic. I actually enjoy it. It's very useful. However, it's not the most optimal form of doing things. And for those who are unfamiliar with what a factorial is, so we have factorial 3, so that's equal to 3, and 3 minus 1, 2 minus 1, 1, so we stop at 1, multiply all those values together, and you have your factorial. So let's replicate that right here, and we're going to say if n is equal to 0, then we are going to return 1, else we are going to return n, and we're going to do a tail call here. So we're calling a function, but the function we're calling is going to be the same function. So we're calling a function within itself. Now remember with the tail call that when you have a locally defined variable, which is n in this case because it's local only to factorial, and that it'll actually store it into memory. So we'll run this through, we put three as the input, it'll go through this, it'll say, okay, we'll run here, um, say three times the result of three minus one. So it's gonna call this again with two being the input here, then it'll do this again, and then it'll make this two minus one, so we have three times two. Then it'll go here, call it for one, one more time. So three times two times one. And lastly, when n is equal to zero, we're going to return one instead. All right, so let's print this out and see what happens. So we're gonna have factorial three. So we're gonna get three times two times one, and that's gonna give us six. Now, when we have six times four, we have 24. 24 times five, we have 120. And lastly, we'll just do 120 times six, and that's 720. So you see that it works, and that's the basic premise of recursion right there. All right, so how can we make this useful for us? Well, actually, let's keep that. I'm going to make a function which is going to load all the files automatically. And this is something I promised in the second tutorial, though you did need quite a bit more knowledge to pull this off. And I'm sure and confident that you guys are ready for this. So let's start with the load files function. And we have file path and last folder for our two arguments. We are going to be using the files and folders. These are going to be tables and we're going to be getting file and find as well. So we're going to have file path and then we're going to concatenate. And file find was used in the last tutorial for those who are curious. And we're going to be searching the game folder instead of the data folder like we did in the last tutorial. And for those who are confused before I continue, that's simply your Gary's mod folder. So that's what we're not going to be using that as our base folder, but that's where the folder that is our base folder is located. So we have 4kv, but instead of v, we're going to call this file to make things less confusing. And then we're going to have in pairs. So we're going to have the files table, which we just got above. And here we're going to go and say local category. So we have our variable category, which is going to be assigned to string sub. And this function, if you recall, is going to get us the file name right here, and we're going to only take the first two characters of that file name and check that with some conditional statements. So, if the first two category or first two characters rather of the file name is SV, you remember that indicates server file. Then we are going to print adding to server, and we are going to concatenate last folder and then we're going to also concatenate file. And likewise, because this is server side, we're going to be including it to init.lua as such. And then let's just copy and paste this and we're gonna save ourselves some time. So remember, we also have shared. So we have shared, adding to shared. And then instead of just including it, we're also going to add CS Lua file, so now the client is able to download the file. So that's the requirement of shared for server and client. And lastly, we have client. So CL is going to be that indicator. And all we need to do here is add CS Lua file. We don't need to include it because it's not going on the server. All right, so next we have a method to get all the files in the base folder that we specify, which is going to be the file path. However, what about all the subfolders? Well, to do that, we have 4kv, and instead of the v, now we're going to have folder to make things less confusing, like I said, and we're going to have folders table, which we got above, and then we're going to load files. So this is where the recursive call comes in, where we're calling the function within itself, and then we're going to specify a file path slash folder as our first argument. For our second argument, we're going to have last folder folder 
and then we're also going to have a forward slash as well. Okay, so just to make sure there are no spelling mistakes and everything is looking good. All right, looks good. Okay, so lastly now what we need to do is do load files. And we're going to be looking in the game folder, so Gary's mod. Then we're going to go to game modes. So our base file or folder right here is going to be game mode. And then we're going to have my game modes. So my game mode. And then we're going to go to the game mode folder in my game mode. So game modes, my game mode, game mode. All right, and lastly, for our second argument, which is going to be the last folder, we didn't have a last folder, so we're just going to leave this blank. Now to show us what we're actually looking through, we're going to say searching, and then we'll concatenate the name of last folder. Now, lastly, before I save this, I just want to note that if you actually are running this, you're going to have to include the client side files manually in, in uh, seal init.lua because they're not automatically included and you can't include them server side. So you got to do that on client only. And lastly, we're going to make some dummy folders and files. So we'll say dummy folder. And then we're going to just copy this file and we are going to rename it. CL, actually, let's do a shared folder. So we'll say dummy file. And then we'll open this up. And we'll say that local v is equal to 5, just so it doesn't return an error. Because remember, we have to have content in the folder, or else we're going to get an error. All right, so that's that. And let's save. And as you can see, we have searching right here, adding to client, so client file, shared file, uh, searching dummy folder, and adding to shared dummy folder slash sh underscore dummy file dot lua. All right, so I hope that really emphasizes recursion. Like I said, it's really useful, and I don't recommend that you use recursion uh, over and over again, like in a think function, which we'll go into in the future, which is called every frame of the uh, client or every tick of the server. And I don't recommend that you use this in a loop either because recursion is not that efficient compared to iteration. So it's okay to use it here when we're starting up the server as it's not going to really impact the performance at all in terms of the gameplay. So I hope that makes sense. And um, for now, I'm going to keep this here for future tutorials because this is a lot nicer and it's going to save us some work. And I hope that makes everything uh, clear. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you like the content, as always, feel free to like, subscribe, share, and bell, and leave any questions in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys later. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.